So here's the thing. Uh, I know you've thought long and hard about this, much like penises yep. are long and hard. And that's uh, the fact that every Invisible Man movie up to this point, as long as far as we know, mm-hmm. has required the Invisible Men in question, whoever they may be, <laughs> to be nude as hell. To yeah, be invisible. Super nude. Like mega nude. In, <laughs> super insanely nude. Confirmed in, uh, what's that movie called? Any Invisible Man That's movie. That's a good point. Read. The one with Kevin Bacon's Wang. Hollow, Hollow Man yeah, is like Hollow the Man. most confirmation of a nude Invisible Man because yeah. he's invisible and yet you still see his Wang. So you know he's nude. You're like, damn, homie, how are you invisible and yet I have seen your penis? Like not even before you got invisible. Happening. While you were invisible. <laughs> How? <laughs> anyway, we're not talking about the Hollow Man. That's actually another video we did, which I don't even know if it's up. Not yet. The point is, we're talking about this iteration of the Invisible Man. Of course, famously, the Invisible Man is a H.G. Wells story that's been spun into a gazillion versions mm. and, and just totally unrelated Huge versions. Huge Guts uh, Wells. Is the Huge name? Guts Wells. That yeah. was his uh, nickname in the streets yeah. of, uh, I don't know, Boston or whatever. I don't know where he was from. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> Huge Guts yeah. wrote this story that, you know, caught the imagination of many a person. But not, it didn't catch enough for them to make loyal adaptations so much. They just kind of, whenever an Invisible Man movie came out, sometimes it was Invisible Women, by the way. Uh, they just kind of did their own thing after the first one. And uh, this one... Uh, kind of does his own thing. It's the David S. Pumpkins of Invisible Man movies, but it keeps the essentials there. The idea of the 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 person that is invisible, kind of not being all there. And while previous incarnations have gone with a formula that makes a person invisible, exacerbates a mental condition. This particular man of invisibility mm. is straight up evil, and I gotta give kudos. To uh, Lee Wano, who, who who wrote and directed this, for giving us a villain that is not likable. There's this thing yeah. in horror where the villains sometimes end up being more likable than than the people you're supposed to give a shit about, and that sometimes that's okay. Don't get me wrong, but it's, it's kind of become become a problematic trope at times. And this one, like, if you like this guy, you're a fucking ball bag. Yeah, you know like I, we even ended up kind of liking freaking uh, the Ken Bacon's wiener. At the end of Hollow that was Man. mostly weenie centric though. That's a good the, point. The, the like, liking, dude, the weenie was amazing. Like, how is it <laughs> invisible and yet fully visible? It defies fucking logic. It doesn't logic. make any sense. Yeah, it's awesome. Anyway, this guy, <laughs> this guy's just this a, guy's a, a stinker. Wheel, yeah. yeah, he's a he's a guy that you you hate. I was gonna say you love to hate, no, but you don't hate. love to hate him. Uh, but that's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? The Invisible Man 2020 is about this a woman played by Elizabeth Moff. Moth. moth. <laughs> she's a big old moth. Hell yeah. Uh, she's attracted to the, to the, to the light, you see. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Elizabeth Moss uh, plays her, and uh, she is this chick that's embroiled in this toxic relationship with a guy that's, well, sociopathic, super controlling, and, and very manipulative, but also happens to be an extremely brilliant scientist in the field of optics. Anyway, she makes her way out of that relationship where she was constantly under a thumb, and... Uh, uh, lo and behold, uh, soon after, he apparently dies. But she is convinced that this is all some ruse to keep her under his control. And of course, because this is a movie called The Invisible Man, we the viewer know that this is so. Or is it? Anyway, this is a psychological tr- a thriller if there ever was one. I mean, it's it, it's more that than anything else. Um, Pretty thrilling. It's trilling. It's it's a trill and a half, they say. Uh, but yeah, yeah, this is this is more a psychological uh, oriented horror film more than anything else, and uh, that I think lends to uh, why I think it's a pretty fucking great iteration. I uh, dare I say the best iteration in my opinion. I don't know where you stand. Give it to me. What's what, what's your take? What's your takeaway at the end? Uh, my my a hole was puckered the whole movie. Uh, that was mostly because I was waiting for the weenie to come up, and it never did. Um, no, then your a-hole would be super loose. Oh, that's a good point. It was puckered because there was no weenie. <laughs> it's like, damn, homie. Uh, that being said, uh, it was a thrill, trilling ride. Uh, I was thoroughly enjoyed it. It's freaking great. Yeah, man. Here's, Hashtag wiener. Here's the thing about the Invisible Man 2020. That's what we're just going to have to call it now. Um, 
It is an exercise in constant tension. When here, I mean, you go in with a title that tells you, yeah, you know, this, this is a homie. Is this invisible. is a guy that's invisible yeah. and a man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, that's like the one thing you know going in. Yeah, that's the one thing you know off off the cuff. And the situation that they put our main character in, Elizabeth Moss, Cecilia, in this case, her name is, um, lends to this immediately being a, a, a thing that never lets up. You know, you're always expecting something. And like his good friend, uh, James Wan, Lee Wan L here manages to elicit a lot of response from negative space, from nothing, from... Uh, literal large empty areas and of course uh, that goes hand in hand with the invisible man thing but uh, you know it's also something that you have to master and you can't just expect your invisible man to carry yeah. you know the whole thing and he did it man uh, you're constantly aware of things like your main characters you're literally saddled in with her on top of her situation being a hard one and one that you're you know sympathetic towards um you're always expecting the worst. And the fact that they didn't come out and just slap everything at you at the beginning, it just builds up and builds yeah. up and builds up. And the situation keeps getting worse and worse. And they get to the point where it's not even about her avoiding this guy. It's about her not being seen as the villain, basically. Uh, so, you know, I both love and hate when movies do that and they do it effectively because you feel so... Uh, you know, just hopeless, like like yeah, buttholes. Yeah, you're like, holy shit, man! Can someone please believe this person? Uh, and th th again, the the whole you know invisible man angle really really helped yeah. the sell this. Uh, the invisible mangle, they call it. Yeah, the mangle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's chilling, they say. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. Anyway, very good, very good. Uh, 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 carry out, very good use of what you have, and I gotta say very good lesson to universal yeah no shit has many a time attempted to start a a uh monster excuse me a monster universe the dark universe they called it at one point but uh, their their approach was throw money at things and make things big and and, and uh, ridiculously large and uh that's a failure this movie is you know it's under the radar in terms of its approach you know what i'm saying uh very very wise use of what is clearly a smaller budget and it could have been a bigger budget and they could have approached it the same way and it would have still been effective the thing is they don't throw stuff at you to make it effective they they actually take stuff away from you to make it effective and that's uh it's refreshing man it's refreshing because it's anti-studio formula and 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 I mean, it works wonderfully. It works. It works wonderfully. Give me something, man. Good or bad? I think the fact that the playing with basically nothing, like as you mentioned, mm -hmm. is very important in this because you don't see the invisible man. No, I know that sounds retarded. You don't see the invisible man, but you <clears throat> literally don't see anything for like a large part of this movie. Yeah. You know, in, in, in Hollow Man, you just saw weenies 24-7. And you're like, oh, I know Kevin Bacon's on screen because his weenies show him. Yeah, Hollow Man was they, a, a special effects-centric approach yeah, to it. Yeah, they usually find a way to let you know that there is something there. But really here, you just see nothing. Yeah. But you know it's there, you know? And they give you little little things here and there. But for the most part, you're seeing nothing. You're kind of just seeing yeah. it through her eyes. Yeah, and, and, and that's what really helps. And uh, don't get me wrong, there's never a moment in this movie where... Really, I'm kind of glad that there's never a moment in this movie where you doubt her sanity. Yeah. Because, don't get me wrong, if they added that, it would have been greater. But it also would have been super, super tense to the point of where you're like, Fucking shit! Stop being tense! He played this just the perfect amount of tension, you know what I'm saying? So that we know that she is, in fact, sane... Uh, it adds a different approach to that to that uh, standard uh, uh, formula, if you will, in the sense that it's more her surroundings that yeah. we're worried about rather than her, um, or I should say on top of her. Uh, but, yeah, dude, uh, just the fact that you don't actively see an effect at work mm. uh, is super, super, super uh, ad 
memorable because many a director would just go, well, fuck it, we can do anything now with computers. Yeah, put a little outline Let's in there. Let's just do something. Put a little weenie in there. Yeah, a little weenie, whatever. Ken Bacon would have definitely been like, put my wiener in. Uh, but we literally work with emptiness for the good portion of the first third of this film. It's just nothing there and the idea of something there, just the mere idea of something there. But I think above that, what is the best thing about this picture is how much we understand the villain, Adrian Griffin, without ever really being around him for much. We get a brief physical introduction to him yeah. at the beginning, but everything we know about the bad guy is through other people and especially through uh, 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 Elizabeth, Elizabeth Moss's character. Uh, that's how we get most of our information. So by the time we eventually do quote unquote see the Invisible Man, his presence is more known in other words, uh, we've already grown to horribly dislike this person distrust this person and be on our fucking toes around the yeah. idea of this I, person i think uh the fact that they don't like that they structure it that way actually kind of helps way better mm -hmm. you know like that if he had just been around i know it's basically what you just said but it's it's really it's really something that you when you finish seeing the movie you're like man if this dude had been in there a lot more i could see some of the effect and it's not yeah, 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 as much. It's uh, you know, and uh, I guess it's an ironic thing, you know, that the less you see of him, the more menacing he is, mm -hmm. you know, and that's that's an achievement all of its own, and that's hats off to to Lee Wano for managing to, uh, you know, elicit that fucking vibe from this guy. He's just such a detestable and uh, I don't know, man, like poisonous presence that you that you you fear the the moment when you're actually gonna when he actually becomes more interactive with the environment mm. which uh you know of course he has to eventually this movie does build up and build up <clears throat> until we get you know kind of like this big spectacle i do before we get to that though i do have to say and i think you'll agree with me here uh that this movie and it's and the previous movie that lee Wan L directed uh upgrade I think these two movies have cemented his style as a director. Uh, whereas previous, you know, he was kind of like, maybe this, maybe that. Uh, I think these two feel dis feel and look a distinctive way that I think we will be seeing from this point forward from Lee Wan L. Short of the subject matter calling for something completely different. But uh, it, there's definitely now something that could be called uh, the Wan L look or style when it comes to his direction although he is of course mostly known for writing and other people directing stuff so so that's pretty cool man to see a writer get his footing as a director and actually have a visual style have visual tropes that you can identify as his is a good sign because there's many a great writer in hollywood that just can't get in the swing of direction a great example is david escoyer who as a director David has pumpkins yeah <laughs> that's another one uh yeah as, uh, David Gore as a director just can't mm, stinky get in the swing of things you know he's never made anything concretely good uh directed uh, anything concretely good and he just doesn't have something that's just like that's a David Gore movie uh but I think Wano has finally hit stride um uh, and that's that's great man that's great you know he, he can now just be in the director's chair if he wants to be for his own shit so that's cool but anyway uh let's talk about uh more about this flick uh give me something man whatever you got on the tip <clears throat> of your nip uh all right this is a weird one mm -hmm. uh but uh i kind of find uh what's her name elizabeth moss weirdly attractive uh she's got the face of a witch she's got a very witchy face I... i'm glad you noticed that i like... i I thought I was nuts, but I I like, thought that many a time. Hardcore witch, like she should play a witch, like she's, a just green face witch. Yeah, yeah, you just slap some paint on her, and there you go, witch. Hard, hardcore witch, but uh, we're hag fans here, so, so maybe that's what it was. Hag point. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, she gets she gets the 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 ding points from me. Also, uh, just to you know undo that that I just did. Uh, she's really good in this. Like yeah. you just see her. 
it's just basically you with her for the most part. You know, there's other characters, but you're with her the whole time, and she's reacting to literally nothing, mm-hmm. and she's really good. Yeah, you would have to have had somebody very competent to be in the lead role, and they picked somebody that is, as you say, just the right fit. Um, I do think she's a Scientologist, though. Yeah, she is, so yeah. negative point for her on that yeah. i think that hollywood is secretly trying to tell her like dude that's not a good religion i mean this whole movie is like dude this whole movie is kind of <laughs> like dude you, you're yeah. being you know gaslighted and told to do certain things yep. and then she's in uh oh uh, yeah that uh, show yeah the fucking show uh, why did i forget the name of it uh, uh, uh low hags i think oh fuck what's the name of it the hulu show you know the show yeah the hulu anyway show. damn i read the book like six we, six months ago and, I, and I've forgotten the name because I'm on the spot you see but anyway she's in that fucking show that's basically like yo <laughs> anyway yeah, it's cold uh, the uh, the thing here is man that uh, she is the the adequate person and maybe I don't know maybe life has fed her art uh, inadvertently but she is really really exceptionally good and you needed that you needed that to, for, to make this film work but the, the surrounding the witch face yes oh well, yeah the, the witch face would I bang <laughs> yes she's not what you would traditionally call an attractive woman. Ah, but I don't know why, uh, dude. She's totally. also not just generally an attractive woman. She's nah. kind of hideous, but she has uh, a weird, bang. yeah, she has a weird like witch-like face. But I'll yeah. totally bang. Anyway, hag points. Yeah. The point is, the rest of the cast as well is pretty fucking solid. We even see the return of some Warnell Constants, but uh, yeah, through and through, a good cast. So that's a big plus. What else, man? What what else you got? Okay, so there is... Mm, Say it. You got to spill. There is an effect mm-hmm. that is interesting. Okay. I'm trying not to spoil anything. All right. Well, it doesn't really, right? We know. I don't know. You tell me. Does it? There's, an eff- <laughs> there's a suit effect. Okay. So, look. We're entering a territory <laughs> yeah. where if you're interested in the Invisible Man's uh, workings, uh, you may not... If you haven't seen the movie, you may not want to go there. So, if you haven't seen the movie... And we're entering slight spoiler territory here. Possibly even major spoiler territory. Uh, although, you know, the movie up front tells you what's yeah, up. Yeah, pretty you much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So really, kind of not. But let me just say it this way. If you're used to the way the Invisible Man is usually the Invisible Man, this takes a completely different route, an approach to that. This is not some chemical compound that's driving somebody crazy and or, as aforementioned, exacerbating a mental condition because, you know, crazy chemical compounds do that, apparently, in horror. Yeah. No, no. In fact, this is kind of more leaning into ideas that have been established in actual science about uh, light refraction and, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So what we have to affect our, or I should, I should say, to get our invisible man here is literally a suit that... Uh, uses other hundreds and upon hundreds of cameras to i guess cause a re, you know a light refraction type of a scenario yeah uh so that is how we get our invisible man what what's your take man i like that it was cool um there is like a scene later on where it's kind of malfunctioning and you get to see the suit mm-hmm. fully and i'm pretty sure that was fully digital mm-hmm. uh it wasn't bad though like usually you're like, man, this is crappy digital dude, and uh, but and I was kind of worried about that, you know, because it was starting to malfunction. I was like, oh no, it's gonna look like a piece. It doesn't look real. I don't think it looked real. Uh, if that was an actual suit, then that was an unreal looking suit. But it was f- functional, and the movie was so good up to that point, and your anus was t- puckered so tight that it was just like, all right, cool. It didn't break it, thankfully. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a combination of both. Yeah, I think um, so. Yeah, but I thought I didn't. I thought it looked good throughout. Yeah. Um, uh, we do for the most part uh, definitely get more physical than anything, uh, and you rarely see the suit. It's literally yeah. an invisible yeah, man yeah. that you don't see most of the time. And this, by the way, linked to what I formerly said about one owl establishing a style of his own, leads to some interesting interactions between the environments. And people and the Invisible Man because, mm. you know, we're seeing nothing yeah. create chaos. And it's pretty cool. And it it's very reminiscent stylistically to the clashes in Upgrade. Only 
somebody's invisible. So that's pretty cool, man. It looks really, really fucking badass. And again, just adds to the overall threat of this already super menacing fucking character and everything that he does. You know, it's just like, god damn it, this guy's stinky. Yeah. Also, frustrating that the cops in this are hella shitty. Um, mind you, it makes sense because there's a little invisible dude running around. You wouldn't be top tier copper or security guy. But I don't know, it just hurts the bee hole. Like, dude, do something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, and sometimes in some horror movies, like, we have, I don't know, just an example. I'm, I'm making this example up. But for, let's say Jason lumbering around mm. slaughtering people. And then you get the cop char- char- character that stumbles in. And it's kind of like, just like, oh, until he gets yeah. killed. Here, At least it, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, here it absolutely makes sense. Like, what the fuck am I looking at? Nothing. And why? You know, just the uncanny sight of nothingness affecting something is like imagine how that would affect you if you saw if you saw why that in real life like what the what do you say to that how do you react to that but it it, it adds to that already like desperation yeah. that you know that the film puts you in that, that that state of desperation where you're like oh god please you know do do something uh, help this woman already you know uh and i say that in the best way which which i'm assuming yeah. you did as well uh, it's just, yeah, the movie just ratchets up the tension so much that, 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 you know, it's almost like you want to tear your hair out. This is one of the few times where the, that type of scene actually fucking works, uh, in the favor of the, of the content. So cool, 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 yeah. cool, 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 cool. Plus she looks like a witch. Plus the witch thing. Yes, of course. Of course it's a Vincible Man movie. So we get the mandatory, uh, rain sequence. Mm. And I got to say again, Lee Wan L going against type here. He could have lingered in that rain sequence. Yeah, there was no weenie. He could have just it ended it there, but he didn't. And that's good, man. This movie constantly, not overtly, but subtly comes in and goes, look, it's this instead. It's that instead. Uh, which I love. So, uh, excuse me. Give me something else, man. Anything you want to add before we go... Uh, to the final stage here and uh, give it a little grade a little score i think uh the last thing that i'll praise uh-huh. is uh elizabeth mott's face and no, i'm just kidding uh the the the, the kind of weird not really a score like sounds i guess uh-huh. there's a lot of silence in this movie yes uh but they use kind of like this weird little hum to kind of make you feel like your butthole's clenching it's really effective and you know the few times that there is music, it's it's used really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind it kind of similar feeling at least to to Gravity, where there's like this like yeah. kind of like heavy feeling of shit. My anus is being torn asunder, and then this kind of freeing feel at the end. Uh, so yeah, it's really cool. The yeah. sparing use of tunes. And yeah, and uh, did bring up the end that freeing feeling at the end. This movie ends it, or I shouldn't say ends but it seems to come to an end and you're like oh please not let this not be the end and any studio uh, a film like if Universal was 100% controlling this thing would have been like yep that's our setup for a sequel this movie goes uh, we can't leave it there and they give you a scene or, or rather the story continues that's very satisfying and at the same time, if you want to, sets up a sequel. So, you know, you can have your cake and eat it too. And uh, Juan L did that here. Uh, of course, we want to ruin what that ending is. But there is a point where the ending could have been there. And it could have just kept that sense of tension going. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But in, studio, in outright studio hands, it would have been a bad thing. And here we get, you know, something a little bit fuller. And still, an open door if you want one. You know what I'm saying? So, cool, man. We all know that Juan L has now struck a deal with Universal. And he's apparently going to be in charge of more of their monster flicks. Because I think, just maybe here, they may have learned their lesson. But uh, never say for sure with Universal yeah. uh, when it comes to these monster movies. But uh, for now, uh, shit, man. Knock it out of the ballpark, right? They gotta make a good mummy movie. Mummy like, movie, if you're you're mummy mummy hater. Yeah, but I, we gotta get at least one good mummy movie besides ninety nine. 
Come on, man. Doesn't Fraser. Uh, so anyway, uh, final thoughts and a final score on a scale of 1 to 10 relative to movies of its ilk. And... So I know I've said it many a time that my beehole was clenched. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can't say it enough. My beehole was clenched. Which is a highly unusual thing. Yeah, usually it's looser than a clown shoe. Yeah. Um, I don't know if clown shoes are loose. But <laughs> pretty, loose pretty loose. I'm wearing uh, some right now. Yeah, my freaking hands were sweaty. Mm -hmm. That's because I had them under my underlaw. They stink. Um, I don't know why, but I was supremely attracted to her and her witch-like face. Uh, so that's always a plus, a witch-like face. <laughs> I mean. You got a cute dog going. Yeah, dude, a little cute little Zeus dog. Mm -hmm. He was cute and sad. Cute, sad dog points. Really likable characters, like her, the people she The liked. friends. Yeah. And yeah, 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 really good. I was like, yeah, I don't want him to get hurt. That's it. I'm not going to continue this, that uh, sentence. So, yeah, I'll give it like a, damn, a b-hole, dude. I guess b-hole points, because it tightened my b-hole, which is hard to do. I'll give it like a tanner, dude. Yep, I agree, man. This is uh, this is a tanner. This is a tanner, folks. We got a tanner in the building. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean Luciano Pavarotti. I mean, this is a straight-up 10-pointer, dude. Good one. Just a great exercise in tension, suspense, uh, thrills a minute, um, and trills, too, if you want. Yeah, uh, yeah man. Uh, solid. Just rock fucking solid. Um, kudos. I, that's all I can say. Uh, this is a winner straight through. If you don't like it, eat my invisible rectum. Uh, no, but let's know what you think about this. Weenie. It is invisible. Yeah, it's, it's just micro. by default of nature. But anyway, uh, let us know what you think about this movie, man. Uh, is it good? Is it bad? What's your take on it? Uh, we love it. So there's that. Anyway, hit like, share, subscribe, and those notification buttons. It is available on BOD right now because, you know, Corona. So uh, take advantage. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Vicious old dingbat. That's totally what it stands for. Yeah. Anyway, bye.